If Sarah wants to be at her friend's house by quarter after three, and the trip takes ninety minutes, what time should she leave? In this lesson, you will learn to solve word problems involving time by using diagrams. A diagram is a plan, sketch, drawing, or outline designed to explain how something works. For example, a clock with the hash marks for each minute explains how one hour equals 60 minutes. Another example would be a chart explaining how to convert five hours into 300 minutes. Let's review time. Each number on the clock represents the hour as well as the minutes. Let's count off the minutes by fives. Ready? Go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. There are 60 minutes in one hour. This clock reads 3 o'clock. We use phrases to tell time, too, by looking where the minute hand is. What time does this clock read? That's right, 3.15. Since the minute hand is one-fourth its way around the clock, or one-quarter of the way, we can also say it's quarter after three or quarter past three. What time does this clock read? That's right, 3.30. Since the minute hand is halfway around the clock, we can also say half past three. Lastly, what time does this clock read? That's correct, 3.45. Since the minute hand only has one quarter of the way left until it reaches four o'clock, we can say it's quarter till four. Let's solve a problem. If Sarah wants to be at her friend's house by quarter after three, and the trip takes 90 minutes, what time should she leave? The first thing we need to do is look for the units of time. We notice the phrase quarter after three, and we notice 90 minutes. So do we convert or do we calculate? Since we are trying to determine what time Sarah needs to leave the house, let's convert this information. A quarter after three really means 315. So we know Sarah needs to be at her friend's house by 315. Now we need to calculate. We are going to use a timeline as our diagram. We know she had to be there at 315, so the end time is 315. We know the trip took 90 minutes, which is less than two hours, so the timeline covers two hours. This makes the beginning of our timeline to be 115. Now we need to calculate backwards 90 minutes. We know one hour equals 60 minutes. Then we keep counting back until we get to 90. So we start with 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 90 minutes. Next, we have to find out what time it is at that hash mark. So we count up from 115 in five minute increments. So 120, 125, 130, 135, 140, 145. The answer to the question is 145. Let's try another problem. Michael wakes up to go to school at 7 a.m. It takes him 8 minutes to shower, 9 minutes to get dressed, and 17 minutes to eat breakfast. How many minutes does he have until the bus comes at 8 a.m.? First, we need to see which units are involved. We have minutes, 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 and we are solving for minutes. Since it is all the same unit, we do not have to convert. We only need to calculate for the answer. We are going to use a timeline to calculate the answer. Notice the timeline begins at 7 a.m. when Michael woke up and ends at 8 a.m. when he gets on the bus. There are 60 minutes in between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. We need to plot each activity on the timeline. He spends 8 minutes showering, 9 minutes getting dressed, and 17 minutes eating breakfast. The remaining area tells us how many minutes he had left. The answer to the question is 26 minutes.
In this lesson, you have learned to solve word problems involving time by using diagrams.